Hello and welcome to this another video of machine learning do it yourself series. In this model, in this series, we are going to talk about ARIMA model, the time series. There are multiple different types of time series models, but ARIMA is most widely adaptive and most frequently used. It's the go-to model for any time series. It has a lot of variations, which we are going to discuss today in this video. So ARIMA, as it stands, autoregressive integrated. So AR, autoregressive I integrated, MA is moving average. Let's denote these three values as P, Q, P, D, and Q. P for autoregressive, uh, D for integrated, and moving average would be Q. And as I mentioned, they are very popular. This not just is being used at various business applications for forecasting a quantity or a value for the future, but also explaining the seasonalities, what happened historically. So these are some use cases. These are some industry-wide use cases of launching a new product line. When is the right time to launch a product line or a product? Predict the values of the stock or forecasting and predicting patterns in products and service sales in order to have better gear and better forecasting models. So these are the use cases which we kind of come across for time series ARIMA models. So as I mentioned earlier, ARIMA is autoregressive P, D, and Q. And then this forecast package can allow you to specify the order of the model. So P, D, Q, there are three orders. It can be 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. It can be any value 5, 7. But it, it all depends on your data. There is no perfect model for multiple data set, multiple various different data sets. You have to always come up with, uh, with regressions and recursive nature of this machine learning job is that you have to kind of go back and understand which model fits best for your data set. So example 101, that means P, D, Q. 1 for P, D, 0, 1. So these are the values which ARIMA can take and it can kind of change your model and forecast accordingly. So if you don't want to get into this, there's a simple auto.arima model which searches through various different options and find out the best suitable model for your uh, for your uh, for your data, uh, it uses it uh, it allows the user to specify maximum order, which is five by default. So you can also specify an order, or you can use Auto Arima to let the model select the best optimal solution or model for you. So <laughs> the building blocks of time series are seasonality, trend, and cycle, and Seasonality is basically if there are fluctuations in the data related to a calendar year. For example, the sales, the sale of air conditioning would go higher during the summertime, or the sale for sweaters or warm jackets, clothes would go higher during the winter season. So seasonality refers to any product bump in product sale or increase in product sale or quantity based on seasonality. Cycle refers to a non-seasonal patterns in the data. So for example, <clears throat> the sale of an iPhone 4 has obviously gone down, which is not a seasonal data because the newer version has come into market. So anything related to non-season data or patterns in the data is cycle components. And trend refers to overall patterns in the data series, which is a combination of cyclic and seasonality. So we'll see in detail how to decompose a time series data into for seasonality. I'm going to show you. And then residual or error is a part of time series, which is which cannot be attributed to seasonality, cyclic, or trend. So we're going to talk about residual as well when we decompose the time series. I'm just going through the theory. You know, just wanted you to understand at a very high level arima, and then we go down to details. And then STL, STL is seasonality trend decomposes, com decomposing function. And it is very important to make sure that the data is smoothing out. So for example, I'm gonna show you in our data set, when you draw a time series graph, it should not be highly uh, you know, uh, variable. The, the, the plotting of the data should not be highly variable or high variation or high difference. It has to be a smooth curve. I'm gonna talk about that in detail. And then 
<coughs> the ARIMA model uses previous lags of series in order to understand and uh, for the for the uh, for the future of forecasting and that is why it is it is consistent it is more consistent than other models and this is fitting an ARIMA model requires a stationary meaning uh, on mean variance and auto variance. So I'm going to talk about moving averages, how we can understand and better predict using ARIMA model. So just to give you a very high level understanding, for ARIMA model we will have a date or a time component or year component and then there is a value which will understand the moving averages. Once we understand the moving averages for last seven days or monthly moving averages, we are going to decompose the data and we're going to smoothen out the data in order to be fit for ARIMA. And then we are going to use ARIMA model, which is manual ARIMA model. You have to define your PDQ. Then we are going to work on auto ARIMA model, which is automatically the model is going to select for you. And then we are going to in include the seasonality component into it to make it much more uh, specific to your data. Having said that, please continue watching this series for more details on ARIMA. Thank you.